Hi everyone and welcome back to the Beginners FreeCAD series for version 1. In FreeCAD the term patterning refers to the repetition of a feature or features in a specific arrangement. These are based on parameters which usually include a number of occurrences. In this chapter we'll explore how to use patterning tools within the part design workflow, including those from other workbenches. You'll also start to use the datum objects such as the datum line and plane. These help customize your patterns. We've already introduced the linear and polar pattern tools, as well as the mirrored, which is considered as a pattern in the part design context. In this chapter, we will take a deeper look at how you would use them together and apply these across different planes. The term pattern and array are often used interchangeably. Here we see a draft array being used in a part design workflow. In technical terms, an array is a collection of elements which can be used to create a feature. While here we see a part design linear pattern being directly applied to create the same feature. A pattern describes the arrangement of repeated features. You may encounter the terms like linear array or linear pattern, both referring to similar concepts, but they require different workflows to be applied. In this chapter, you'll learn how to identify and simplify patterns and how to use FreeCAD's pattern and array tools efficiently. Let's start by taking a brief look at the four patterning tools in the part design. The polar pattern allows for a body or feature to be repeated in a radial format at a given degree. The reference that can be used to determine the center to pattern around can be a base plane, sketch axis, or a reference such as an edge. In this example, I've used a datum line. The linear pattern allows for a body or feature to be repeated in a straight line. This can be along an axis or a reference. These also include datum helpers, such as the datum plane or datum line. Here I've created a linear pattern on an additive box, removing material with a subtractive sphere. You can see the datum line is used to guide the pattern. Then we have the multi-transform. When using part design patterns, you cannot pattern a pattern. You need to create something called a multi-transform. A multi-transform allows you to combine multiple patterns into more complex ones. In this example, I've taken the previous example and created two linear patterns, one along the datum line and then pattern that result along the z-axis. The mirror tool allows you to mirror a feature or a whole body across a plane. These planes include base planes and datum planes. Datum planes allow for mirroring away from the center of origin of the contained body and allow you to customize the direction and angle. In this example, we see a plane intersecting an additive box, which is being reflected over the datum plane. Though we're currently concentrating on the part design, the subshape binder, part design clone, and body base feature allows us to use other tools from other workbenches, such as the ray tools in the draft workbench. This with the part design bodies allow compound option opens up more options and workflows. So how do we identify when to use a pattern? If you've been following along with previous chapters, one rule we've constantly emphasized is the importance of simplifying your subject before beginning the modeling process. This simplification involves breaking down the subject into its component parts or features, then tackling each individually. During this stage, we determine whether we're working with an assembly or a composite part. A repeating pattern feature may not need to be modeled as a pattern within the part itself. Instead, it can be created once and duplicated during the assembly process. Take, for example, a box with multiple hinges. Whether or not you use a pattern depends on how complex that hinge is. Even if that hinge is a simple feature, it can still be added in the assembly stage instead. We have to decide if the hinge is treated as a separate component. I haven't talked about assemblies yet, but there is a crash course introduction on my channel, and I'll leave that link in the description below. When it comes to actual modeling process, we also go through a simplification where we remove finishing features such as fillets, chamfers, and other details, which can obscure the core geometry. These finishing features can include patterns such as knurling, feature textures, or holes and slot configurations, which are often added later. You may also be able to speed up your workflow by building a section of your model using a combination of features and then using a pattern to repeat it. This approach can simplify and accelerate your modeling process. This is often seen when the subject has symmetry, 
A common strategy is to build one half of a complex object, then use a mirror to generate the other half. If the mirror is performed across multiple planes, then a polar pattern is worth considering, allowing for the two mirror operations to be reduced to just one. Now we've had a brief introduction to patterning and the ways we can use them, in our next lesson we'll explore these tools and workflows in deeper detail. I hope you enjoyed that brief overview and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.